what we're going to do now is we are going to uh, go through MIDI, how MIDI works and how to expose the piano roll and things like that. Um, so first off, as you can see here, uh, when we recorded the MIDI, uh, we automatically got a, a MIDI region created for us and the notes were automatically inserted, which you can see here. Now this, there's no, I can't edit this. Why can't I edit this? Well, you need to expose the piano roll in order to edit things. And the piano roll works quite uh, works differently in order compared to other, uh, other software, more or less, or usually this order is fairly unique in this. And that's, that is that the piano roll is actually contained here inside of the editor window. So when you double click this, you don't get a new, uh, a new window where you can edit MIDI notes. Uh, but instead you, you edit MIDI notes in the actual region. But where's the piano roll, you wonder? Well, uh, you have to make the track bigger in order to see the piano roll because the piano roll is inside of the editor. So if we grab the bottom end of this one here and we pull down, you can see that we get the piano roll. Yay! So going through the piano roll, this is just a general uh, a classical piano roll. You can press the different keys here. Great. You can also, this, this um, shows you where on the piano you're currently showing. So if we move this up, you can see that notes get higher. Move this down. We get... That's nice, Bessie. We get that. Move it up. You can also, oops, sorry. You can also um, increase the amount of keys you see, and you can decrease the amount of keys you see. You can see that the notes get easier and easier to see the more you uh, decrease the volume of the notes you see, or decrease the amount of notes you see. You can also move this up and down by using the scroll, which is what I usually do. So scrolling down moves this down. Scrolling up moves this up. Great. Okay, so um, what I will do now is I will will move this up a bit. We will scroll in so we can see the notes. And now we are going to enter the MIDI region because you have to enter and put it on note mode before you actually can do anything with these. If I take this MIDI region right now and I pull it around, you can see that I only pull the MIDI region. I can't grab any of these notes because we are currently in the region mode. So if I instead double click on this, left double click, I enter the region. Now you see if I try and pull this, I can't pull uh, the region around. But if I hover this, I can see the individual notes, I can grab them and I can move them. Okay. So if we play here. Very beautiful, very beautiful. Um, so the notes, uh, basically, in case you haven't been around a uh, MIDI sequencer before like this, the length of the notes is uh, how long the actual note is here. And the strength of the note is uh, indicated by how light the, the, the note is. So for instance, if we hover this, we'll get all the information we need. We'll see that this is an A2. Uh, it's on channel 1, which I don't care about, uh, and then it has velocity 65. So if I left click this and select this, I can increase and decrease the velocity by using the scroll wheel. So if I scroll up, I increase the velocity. If I demark this, you can see that it gets lighter all the way up to 127. You can see this is the strongest possible note. You can hear it pretty strong. Yeah. And then you can select this again, and if we pull it down, scroll down, scroll down, you can see that it gets darker and darker. That means that it's weaker. Okay, so you can of course select several notes and raise them. And now you can see that it stops at 79. Why, you wonder? Because there's a note inside of the selection here that has already reached 127. It's this one. Yeah, it's that one, which means that th this as a group cannot be increased more uh, and still preserve the kind of relativeness between the notes' velocities. So that can be something to keep in mind. Um, okay. So, oh, and the, the I think this is bound as well uh, on the 
the standard order version, but E is the shortcut to enter and exit regions. So E is what I press occasionally. I will occasionally forget myself where I, uh, when I uh, use the shortcuts instead of explain. I apologize for that. Okay, so editing and moving MIDI notes around uh, can be done either by taking it, oops, sorry, uh, by taking it and pulling it um, with the mouse, or you can use the keyboard like that. And editing follows the grid settings. So if we have this set to grid, we control how uh, much we want this to snap here. I'm not going to go through this in depth, but if we want to move uh, things in fourths, we select this one. And you can see that we move it in fourths. And then we can select this one and move it in eighths instead. And so on. You get the, the principle here. Um, same goes for resizing. Now we're resizing in fourths. Uh, and yeah, that is it. So you can change that in here. Okay, so what we'll... I'll show you now as well is you can draw MIDI notes and that is done here by pressing this one, activate that, go in and you simply, it also follows the grid settings, so you simply press and drag as long as you want this to be. So if you want this to be two beats, as you can see here, as indicated by uh, the gray kind of uh, lines behind here, the white lines indicate that this is the start of a new bar start of a new bar, and so on, and this is the new beat, new beat, new beat. You can see that we've made this two beats, we can resize this, grab it, move it around, and you can see that, <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Um, it works, you can also move this with the keyboard, up and down, move it around like this. Very nice, very nice. Okay, great. Um, you can, of course, move these as well, which I've already done. Okay, awesome. <clears throat> so that is, there's also, there's a bunch of other MIDI stuff, uh, like uh, using a step editor, which I never do. So I am not able to uh, basically show you how that works because <laughs> I don't know how it works myself. But for those of you who know what a, a step editor is, this is an order bug that you currently don't have to worry about. Uh, if you want to, um, you can see that you can right click for step edit. So if we right click this, press step entry, you get this, whatever that means. Um, yeah, I'm not going to attempt to explain this, but for those of you who know what a step editor is, there that's where you find it. Uh, and if, yeah, we'll get a tutorial eventually that deals with step entry. Okay, moving on, we will actually go ahead and zoom out and we will, oh, that's the step entry, cool. Um, and we will um, delete this region. Now we'll go, we'll try and go to the actual uh, making of the little song we're going to do. We save this. Um, the first thing we are going to do here now is we're going to create a new MIDI region. Now you don't have to, like I did, record something in order to get a new MIDI region. Instead, you can simply left click on the canvas, or double left click, and that creates a new MIDI region. So you can do this as much as you want. You can move it around like that. And this works just as regular region. So you can resize it to the left, resize it to the right. You can split it. I'm pressing S now, which splits it. Uh, you can delete it with Dell. You can duplicate it by pressing D. This will create two um, identical instances. So for instance, um, all right, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Um, We'll start by making a four bar little kind of chord thing here. Just something extremely simple. Uh, so I I'm just uh, increase the size of this region to four bars. One, two, three, four. Great. Now we'll zoom in and we'll left double left click to get into the region. And now we are going to draw notes because I'm not going to play them. We're going to start by drawing notes. <laughs> Uh, is this, we scroll down to get, we'll, okay, we'll, we'll use, we'll start from here. We'll start with an A, a fake kind of power chord A thing here. So we'll start by drawing an A for an entire bar. So I selected the, uh, the draw edit MIDI notes here and press and drag to make it this long. 
Then we're going to go seven steps up in order to make this sound somewhat okay in A minor. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yay. I'm going to put another one there. If we start, if we play this, you can hear it's a very basic A minor chord, I think. Someone who knows music theory will can comment if it's not. Uh, and we'll go ahead and we'll add something else here. Uh, this time I'm going to... There's I'm playing my keyboard now, so I'm going to think what I want to add. Yeah, just do a, a classical one like this. We'll add a C. Like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven steps. And now we're going to... Yeah, we'll add a G. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oops, this one didn't get long enough. Uh, that's only th we need another bar, of course. Ah, uh, this a bit slow, perhaps, but okay. Well, and we'll go even. I will just do something very cheesy. We'll add uh, maybe a D. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, something very basic. Okay, so that is it. We have our basic, basic, basic chord progression. Let's we'll save. Um, and now we are going to, in short, record uh, some some form of MIDI uh, melody on this, on top of this. Uh, but first off, we are going to duplicate this. So when you work with loop-based music like this, this is a loop, four-bar loop. You usually want to keep the same uh, region and have that uh, play. Uh, throughout the song. So instead of making this even larger and redrawing all of this or uh, sorry or marking and copying everything you can simply make this as long as you want, four bars and then you can duplicate it. Press D. This duplicates the region and the, these are exact copies that follow each other. So if I take this note and I move it, you can see it gets moved here as well. It's a good thing to keep in mind. Uh, so we'll go ahead and duplicate, duplicate. I'm pressing D here to duplicate. And we'll get ourselves a nice little, um, a nice little, um, yeah, I don't know, a nice little segment of, uh, of sound here. And we'll go ahead and decrease the size of this track because we're currently done with this. Um, all the way up here. And we'll go ahead and we'll lower the volume a bit of this. So you can see that our incredibly simple thing plays here. Great, now we're going to add a new MIDI track and we're going to play a little melody somehow here. 